Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and since there is a beautiful sun out there, uh, and I'm sure after the two days you're all dying to get out to enjoy some of the wonderful Tuscan sun, uh, I'll be very brief. Uh, I haven't been here for all of the two days because for another reason, one of our chairs was holding uh, a one-day seminar on the Euro crisis, which I had to attend. So. In, over the last two days, I've been at uh, two workshop stroke seminars that dealt with two of the big crises that, that, and challenges that, that uh, the European Union has faced. And they're very different. And even though the Euro crisis is now beyond its acute phase, uh, it's not still a sustainable, it's not still a sustainable uh, currency area. Uh, in terms of, I'm very pleased that the forum began in thematic terms with demography. What we've clearly heard over the last two days is that Europe has demographic needs, that migration has, is, has already impacted on, uh, on European demography in terms of birth rates and numbers of people. I think if one looked at it simply in terms of the raw data on demography, then one would assume that Europe would be very open to inward migration that inward migration would address some of those long-term, uh, the phrase I think used by the specialist is demographic replacement. I think one would also argue that those policies are probably best done collectively at a European level for all sorts of reasons. So one has to ask why not, because it's not happening. There is across refugees, asylum and migration, the member states of the EU continue to be deeply, deeply divided. Um, and on, divided on burden sharing, divided on flows, divided on, in all sorts of ways. And so I think we need to begin to ask why, or we need to ask why, but then we also need to ask, can Europe find the capacity to cooperate? broadly in these, in these policy fields. I would say there's no magic package deal. There's no silver bullet. There's no easy way for the collective of 28 member states to tackle this for the following reasons. Politically, it's extremely difficult now in Europe to deal with these issues. For many, many years, migration was kept at the technocratic level, particularly within the European Union, below, an attempt to keep it below the level of controversy. It's now not below the level of controversy, and in my view, now requires political response. Uh, it can't any longer be contained uh, at, the technocratic, at the technocratic level. Secondly, there's a real problem of burden sharing. It, it affects different parts of Europe differently. The frontline states are affected in the immediate sense by the flows. Uh, the attractiveness of some countries over others, everyone wants to go to Germany or Sweden or to cross, uh, to cross the English Channel and get to the United Kingdom. So there are more or less attractive parts of Europe. And the numbers on the face of it should be, could be absorbed. Germany is about 1.1 million refugees last year and about point a half a million asylum seekers. For a country the size of Germany with German wealth, that appears to be uh, manageable. But the reality politically is that the focus now of the federal government and many of the state governments is to contain flows. And in fact, in my view across Europe now, there is a very strong emphasis on, uh, on containing, uh, on containing uh, flows. So it, the question is then how, I think given Europe's neighborhood, both the instability to the south uh, and also the, de the, the demographics that we saw in terms of Africa, there's likely to be more, uh, there's likely to, these flows are not going to stop, they're not going to disappear. But I do think it matters what happens on the borders because you can't have or maintain a border-free Europe internally with very porous borders externally. You simply won't be able to do it politically. And so there has to be some strengthening of the external borders. You've got to strengthen Frontex and you've got to strengthen Europol. And you've also got to link some of this to security. You can't contain it only in terms of the realm of demography and the realm of migration. You also have now got to add, uh, got to add security. And probably in, in financial terms, I mean, I was struck, it's, 
we're very fortunate that the German economy is as strong as it is because the cost to Germany at the moment is about 15 billion and that's not trivial, that's not small. But we're, it's fortunate that it's come at a time when Germany uh, itself, its economy, at least for now and certainly in the, in the last period has been, has been strong. But I think in terms of creating some means of a collective response that uh, one should think about some sort of imaginative financial instruments like refugee bonds that could be issued like the, by the European Investment Bank that would be a collective resource probably funded by taxation in the future that would help lubricate and act as incentives for, uh, for policy makers for the moment. But I do think that we've all got to think now more carefully about how you generate cooperation in hard times. Cooperation in easy times is easy, <laughs> but how, how you generate a capacity to cooperate in hard times, I think, is the biggest challenge facing uh, the European Union today. Uh, and unfortunately, I have absolutely no answers. But then that's, uh, that's why we're here. Uh, we're here to think about these things and here, hopefully, to begin to fashion some answers uh, over the next period. So, and again, before I leave, a really big thank you to the Migration Policy Centre, to Philippe and all of his colleagues for uh, organizing this and for bringing you all uh, for bringing you all together and we hope that uh, Philippe has now got demography on the Schumann agenda and hopefully it's not not for the last not for the last time but thank you very much for all that you've done well, just a few words to to to, to conclude our uh, meeting uh, first of all thank you I think you were uh, uh, tremendously uh, uh, performant during this meeting. Um, demographers among us will uh, remember certainly William Brass, who was a big demographer. At the end of each meeting, he was used to grade the meeting between zero and five. I think we're not far from five, so I'm very happy uh, with this, and thank you very much to all of you. Now, uh, we've had extremely useful discussions, even though we did not discuss uh, perhaps sufficiently what could be the role of Europe as a union, but we identified a number of, of connections between demography and migration. Not so much with citizenship, but demography and migration certainly. Um, the, the, the good news is that nothing uh, that was said here uh, is lost because everything was tape recorded. Not only it was tape recorded, but someone in the room took notes. So uh, what will uh, come next now? Because we are not done with, with uh, the exercise. Uh, I think in the very short term, we are going to uh, produce a, a short paper. And here I would like to introduce Geraldine. Who are you? Uh, where are you? Geraldine is here. So Geraldine has been a key person in this meeting because she took the notes. And in, in a few days, the notes will become a blog entry uh, on, uh, on our website, and you will recognize uh, our discussions. So uh, Geraldine uh, was silent, but so uh, useful. Thank you, uh, Geraldine. Uh, <laughs> In, in, in addition to this, uh, I think we are going to work, and, and also with Jardine, but uh, other colleagues, to produce a, a policy brief out of this. And that should come also in, let's say, uh, not too long from now. Uh, I would say in two or three weeks. Uh, otherwise, that would be too late. So a policy brief should come, which is a longer document with more uh, sort of uh, politic of policy-relevant analysis, not political recommendation, but policy-relevant analysis. And moreover, I think that we had uh, tremendously good contributions. And I would like perhaps to, uh, to explore the idea of an edited volume uh, out of this uh, uh, conference. That is a longer exercise. Uh, but you will, uh, you will hear from me uh, very, very soon about uh, this idea of an edited volume 
on the connection uh, between migration and demography in Europe, but keeping in mind that Europe is part of the global world. And I'm extremely happy that we had also views from outside Europe, because we should not, and I repeat this, uh, we are in a period of crisis, uh, but that crisis will pass. Why uh, the, the, the demographic, I don't know if it's a predicament or a blessing, but will continue. So we need to consider that Europe is only part of the global world. And uh, so you will, you will hear from me about uh, this idea of an edited volume. And the last word will be also uh, for someone who made it possible for us to meet and to have such a, a useful and pleasant time. And Sarah is in the back, but you all know Sarah, of course. And thank you. And last word about Sarah, because not only she organized uh, everything, your travels, our meeting, uh, but she uh, made the interviews also. So you are uh, going to have your interviews on our website. Uh, I don't know, perhaps already today, I don't know, but uh, uh, next week certainly. And that is also Sarah's work. So uh, thank you, uh, Sarah, for this also. And uh, it is not uh, the end of the day. There is still sun outside. So try to enjoy um, the rest of the day uh, in, in Tuscany or so. So thank you uh, again for, for coming here. Thank you. Bye-bye.